Hello YouTube viewers, this is Christopher Parham at Lipo Conditional Solutions and I was just updating the progress on reviving my load bank here. Uh, so I was trying to clean up this resistor and in the midst of cleaning this one up I ended up cracking cracking the resistor. It's still, it's still a circuit here but I just decided not to clean it any further. Um, I put new leads on it. I disconnected the old ones, uh, redremmeled all the rust and corrosion, and tried to solder on new leads as best as possible. Uh, so I got new leads on this one, and um, and I still terminated it to uh, four millimeter bullets here. Um, so the way that I had this before, they were kind of this I put each one of these resistors has a hole in it through each end and so I had soldered the resistors together and laid it you know laid it and tacked it on across and so um, this time around I just uh, desoldered everything cleaned up everything and then I put the wire I tent the wire put it through the hole to line the holes up between the two resistors and I just went to town uh, globbing on uh, solder to get a nice nice little pool nice little mirror finish and everything so um, there's really not much I can do with this I'm gonna ride this resistor out until it dies um, but with the new setup the new setup should run a lot cooler to where it shouldn't murky up the water like this one's been doing uh, whenever I've been testing and I let the water get low. It starts mercury, uh, getting the water kind of nasty and murky. But as long as I have like a full container and um, a fresh, clean water and I keep it topped off, I usually don't have any problems. And and, and when, it, when the water starts getting hot, like super hot, like 160, 170, 180, that's when I normally start getting dirty water. So... Um, in the previous video, I said I had a three gallon bucket of water, like a mop bucket, and that was working fine until I messed around and let the water run out of it and the resistor boiled off all the water and burnt a hole in the bucket. So I've temporarily used, uh, uh, like one of those metal cooking trays, like the disposable ones and come to find out it was actually um kind of causing like a, some form of electrolysis so it was actually leaching metal off of the container and causing even more corrosion and everything so there is a little bit of uh dc leakage on this but uh i have both of these side by side to show you this is the new this is the new uh resistor uh, setup that I have for 24 volts and this is my old one for 12 volts so both of these will still be working independently I will use this for initial testing um, like when I first grab a unit out the stack modify it to get it cut on and then do an initial load test for like 10-15 minutes to make sure uh, you know the unit is working and okay before I do any modifications and normally what I used to do afterward was follow up follow up with another test after I've done all the modifications uh, but it was only on a 12 though I was 12 volt basis I was testing each if there was a 24 volt unit I would have to test each one individually because this has the wrong ohm load to test at 24 volts so I would test each one individual and if it checked out and the ground isolation everything was good I would let it go but now I have this resistor over here which is two one ohm resistors in parallel this is two half ohm resistors in parallel for a total of 0 0.5 ohms this one is two one ohm resistors in parallel and that brings it down to 0 0.5 ohms and makes it suitable for 24 volt testing and then this would do testing at 24 volts and about 45 amps um, so 12 volt tip, initial testing and 12 volt power supply testing uh, completed 24 volt power supply testing and then what I also realized is 
since this one is 0 0.25 ohms and this one is 0 0.5 ohms, if I wanted to test a 36 volt power supply, um, all I have to do is put these resistors in series for 0 0.75 ohms and it will test a 36 volt power supply at 36 volts and about 45 amps. I can also use the same setup with these two resistors in series for 48 volt um, 48 volt testing, but it'll test out around 65 amps. So I'm not exactly sure if I want to go that route because that's an extreme load. I have to basically put two power supplies on one circuit and two on the other, and then it will totally be maximizing both of those circuits. So um, I may end up getting two more resistors at the appropriate ohm load to where you know I can series another set of resistors to kind of bring that bring that amperage down to something a little bit more manageable like 45 amps like I said I can test this one at 12 volts 45 50 amps I can test uh, 24 volts at 45 50 amps I can test 36 volts when I put them in series at 36 volt 45 amps it's just a 48 it'll be testing at 65 amps too high I'll probably get a third one and, and call it a day but um I also, like I said, I got ended up getting a 17 gallon plastic container from Home Depot. So, you know, I said I was going to get five gallons. I ended up getting 17 gallons. So, even under the heaviest load all day, all day long, it shouldn't get it too hot uh, to where they start degrading the enamel coating on the resistors even further. And so, uh, It'll be a closed lid system. I'm going to drill a small hole for the wires to come out and use those plastic uh, cable ties and zip tie the, the leads to the top to the lid so they don't sink down in the water or fall in the water or whatever. But it'll be uh, a closed top self-contained system. And even if it does get hot enough to steam the water, I really doubt it will get so. I really doubt it will get that hot to create that much steam. But with that lid being on it, um, it should just hit the lid and condense back down into the uh, into the water. And then it's not like it's a sealed system because the lid is not like creating an airtight seal. So um, if the hole that I make for the wires, if that's not allowing enough venting, more likely the top will just blow off. But I don't think it will even build up that much pressure or anything so um, I can't wait to show you the finish uh, the finished result and everything um, I said I was gonna put these in series I ended up creating a, a, a four millimeter female to female uh, connector so I'll basically take uh, one resistor here and uh, put a four millimeter bullet I mean you know take the four millimeter bullet put it in the coupler and then get the other, the other uh, resistor, put them in series, and then use the outer two connectors um, to plug into the power supply for the load. So I'll show how everything is set up once I, I get done, but that's the update for now. Thanks for watching.